Draft time is almost upon us, and today is the day of the top 50 draft rankings. He's at the line. Shane Wright, Rich shot, scores! The captain, Shane Wright! We're tied up at two! 2.16 left, and a shot from Zavkowski. Wow, you can never count the young man out. You can see why he's so highly thought of. It's not 18 till March, and he's got three goals in his first two Olympic games. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the 2022 NHL Draft Rankings and the top 50 prospects for the 2022 draft. We're going to be going through my rankings today after watching a bunch of of these prospects throughout the past couple of years. The 2022 draft is almost here and we're going to be going through the top 50 prospects in this class. But for the 2022 NHL draft, who are the best prospects in this class? Who should your team take? And where could these prospects go on draft day? Watch till the end for the full rankings and the full prospect analysis and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new. 50% of the people that are watching are not subscribed, so if you like hockey content and prospect content, this channel is the place to be. Now we haven't released one of these prospect rankings since December and a lot has changed since then and a lot of work has gone into the list as well, so hit that like button if you haven't already and we'll also have some honorable mentions on the side before we get into this top 50. But you know what, without further ado, let's move on to the top 50 prospects in the 2022 NHL draft and starting things off at number 50 I got Seattle Thunderbirds forward Jordan Gustafson who in my opinion will be a solid third line fourth line defensive and two way forward has some good speed to him has some good overall tools but I see him being a solid third liner who just gets the job done really makes life difficult in the defensive zone going on to number 49 I have Pano Fimis of the Niagara Ice Dogs he's an efficient solid player has good tools overall and I love his shot and passing combo he's a player though that I think could add some explosiveness and and some better anticipation when the puck's not on his stick, but I think overall he could be a really consistent and good four-flying centerman. Next, I'm moving to number 48, and one of the biggest wild cards of this draft in Kamloops Blazers forward Matthew Semenov. Now, to me, Semenov has really interesting potential, but the main gripe I have of him is his skating. His form is wacky, his explosiveness is just not there, and although he knows where to be, he is in the right positions most of the time. I feel like that skating holds him back from truly unlocking his best form. Form. fantastic passing ability his hockey sense is amazing but again I feel like if he adds some more skating to him that's really the only thing keeping him back from a great middle six role in the NHL then going on to number 47 we're gonna go to a player that shares a name with another high, uh, high profile NHL player not Jack Hughes but Elias Pedersen another Swedish player this time though on the defensive side of things is one of my choir players in this draft class but in my opinion I think he'll be a really consistent and longevity defenseman in the NHL. Very solid, I think, in a bottom pairing role. He's going to be great defensively, knowing where to be. His skating is pretty great for his age and pretty great for his frame. And at six foot two, I think he's going to be a solid and consistent bottom pairing guy that you won't have to worry about too much at the NHL level. Going on to number 46, almost the complete opposite of Elias Pettersson, I have defenseman Ty Nelson. To me, Nelson has become one of the most frustrating players of this draft. I am in a lot higher at the beginning of the year, and I was trying to make excuses for him, but as the year has gone by, and especially throughout the OHL, like, to me, he's just such a weird player to watch and such a frustrating player to watch. So many simple plays that could be made by him are just thrown away for dumping and chasing it, and just really not using his, his strengths to his advantage. He's a player that does have some really great skating, really great tools, but I don't see him unlocking it enough. If he does and takes that next step, he's a first-round talent, but right now, I have him outside of that. Next up at number 45 is Isaiah George, big time defenseman at six foot one, but also has a, a much bigger style of game to him. One of the better defensive defensemen of this draft, in my opinion, and his skating is pretty great too. Although I don't think he has too much potential, will likely, alongside Elias Pettersson, be a pretty great bottom pairing guy. He'll be a gel guy and will be exactly what you're getting in a player like that. Next up at number 44, I got Cameron Lund out of the USHL. He's one of the more underrated players of this draft, one of the more clean and efficient players out there. Nothing too fancy to his game and all Although I do think that skating can take a next step. At the same time, he has great physical traits already, knows where to be at the right times, and at six foot two, I think he'll be a, st a stylized NHL player and a ready one in a bottom six one day. But next up, moving on 
down to number 43 and one of my hotter takes of this top 50. At number 43, I have Swedish defenseman Elias Saliamonson. Now, a lot of people have soured on him. I still think of him as a top 50 prospect. His tools are absolutely elite. His skating is fantastic. And I think his defensive structure is brilliant. The problem is, especially on the rush and in the offensive zone, some of the decision making can be flat out horrible. And if you remember, going back to last year, a lot of this profile starts to start, starts to sound like Simone Edvinson. And to me, Sully Monson is kind of a less, lesser version of that. Might not be as elite, might not be as talented, but still has a lot of great tools. And if you're able to unlock that brain, there's so much potential to be had. Next up at number 42, we're going to go to German forward Julian Lutz, a player that was injured throughout most of the first half and then came back and has played pretty well in the DEL, in my opinion, brings some fantastic physical strength. And with his speed at six foot two, to me, this is a player that could be a really solid and really good middle six player and could even max out as a second line player that you have on a power play and really work with offensively. Going on to number 41 and next up I have Sam Renzel, USA defenseman out of the USHL. One of the more frustrating defensemen on this list but at the same time if you're able to unlock those tools and that skating especially, this is a guy that could be a solid physical, solid and, and good way two-way defenseman at the NHL level. The problem is his defensive work is absolutely horrendous. At six foot three the guy cannot cover anybody and gets blown away way too much for just how good of a skater he can be. To me, there's potential to be unlocked there, but also, again, some of the decision making and some of the edge work does need work. But going on to number 40 and going on outside of the first 10 picks, moving on to number 40, I got one of my favorite players of this draft in Devin Kaplan. Now, I'm pretty high on Kaplan for a multitude of reasons. His six foot three frame really complements his offensive skills, and he's a very dynamic very concise and very consistent player in the offensive zone. Gets great results in his transition play. Is amazing. Loves to work within the neutral zone and prove and push play. The problem is, I think some explosiveness is needed and I also think his edge work is a little bit raw, but at the same time if you are able to unlock him, I could see a great and solid and physical middle six player. Next up, though, at number 39, we're going to go to Christian Kairu, Jordan Kairu's younger brother of the Erie Otters. To me, there's a lot to like with Kairu. His offensive game is sublime. Such an interesting and creative player in the offensive zone. Loves to push play and loves to get it into high danger areas, as well as the defense, where I feel like there's some raw tools that can be unlocked. He's not a pure offensive defenseman. I mean, there is some tools to work with there and you combine that with his shooting with his pace of play to me there's a lot to like there and a pretty solid early bet in the second round next up at number 38 i'm gonna go to one of the more refined players in my opinion of this draft and adam secura coming out of slovakia who's been really interesting this year one of the better defensive skaters i would say of this draft loves to correct play and loves to get away from opposition control it and with his physical stature and size even though he is five foot ten he's a player that loves to get in the dirty areas, loves to play along the boards and control pace once again. Good possession player, and although I think there is some work to be done in terms of his decision making in the neutral zone, he's a player that has great positioning and I think could be a really solid middle six defensive forward at the next level. Now going on to number 37 though, and Owen Beck. To me, the biggest problem with Beck is just there's not that much potential in him. I feel like his pace of play is a little bit unrefined, but at the same time, I do like his skating quite a bit, and I do like his overall hockey sense and the decision making. Very effective and efficient player in the offensive zone. I don't think he's going to push the needle too much, but as a third line centerman, I think a long set of lines like uh, and Lars Eller, he's going to be good enough and solid and consistent on a winning team. But now moving on to number 36, talking about great potential in the future for a winning team. Going on to number 36, I'm going to go to Jack Hughes 2.0. Not 2019 Jack Hughes, 2022 Jack Hughes, which is a much different player. When it comes to Jack Hughes, I think he's one of the more underrated and consistent players of this draft. The name of the game for me with him is just consistency and raw work ethic. He's a player that as a third line centerman, I think is going to be absolutely amazing in that role going in the future on face-offs with the leadership he provides and just the example that he exudes. He's such a consistent and solid player and so much fun to watch. But now moving on to number 35 and speaking of fun to watch, let's go on to one of the biggest wild cards, one of the hardest players to project in this NHL draft in Ivan Miroshoshenko. Now, even before he got Hodgkin's lymphoma there was a lot of question marks surrounding him and his really lack of production throughout the year in 
in 2021, he had a lot of different places where he was producing exceedingly well and was looked at going into this draft class as one of the top five, top 10 players available. This year, it didn't really all come together, but I still think the tools are there. His puck handling is great. His skating can really be fantastic in key moments. And to me, if he's able to revive, uh, revive some of that hockey sense that he still has in him, to me, he's a player that could be a top six forward, but is definitely one of the bigger boomer bust prospects of this draft class. Now, talking about boomer bust, let's go on to number 34 and one of the most interesting and electrifying defensemen of this draft class in Lane Hudson. Now, he is five foot eight, and that's going to be a big uh, detractor for some people. But at the same time, I still love a lot of the tools when it comes to Hudson. Although the physical traits aren't there for a player that size, his skating is very good, and it's honestly, in some ways, getting better and better as time goes on. His puck handling is elite. His passing game is fantastic, and his vision is one of the best among defensemen in this draft. To me, there's a lot of pace that Hudson brings, and going to Boston University, I think this is a player that can get re re refined a lot, and hopefully the next level will be able to push play a lot better with the physicality around him. Now going on to number 33, we're going to go to another player from the USDP in Isaac Howard. He's a player that I think needs a lot to get to the next level. I think his physical traits aren't quite there yet, and I think going against harder competition is going to be an adjustment for him, and that defensive game is really nowhere to be seen. But on, at the same time, that transitional play that he has, that great play in the offensive zone that he's able to provide, he loves to create space, loves to get in deep, and with his shot, has so much potential, I think, in the next level as a power play forward. Probably going to be a solid third line power play forward who gets around 40 points a year and is just solid every single time. But now let's move on to the first prospect in the first round rankings at number 32. And let's go on first things first to Swedish defenseman Matthias Havelid. Now to me, Havelid has a lot of great potential to unlock. At his frame though, at 5'10", there is some questions with his physical traits. I think he'll definitely need to step up his frame and his posture at the next level. And I do think his skating as well with his edge work can be a little bit better and his explosiveness too. But at the same time, he has such a solid IQ to him, knows where to be and knows where to pass to and his passing an offensive game is really at a high level. I could see him being a top four power play quarterback, but there is still some pretty big question marks there. But going on to number 31, going to a player that doesn't have many question marks, next up I have from the USDP, Jimmy Snuggerud. Now, he is just barely worth a first round pick in my opinion because of what he's able to do on a consistent overall basis. He's not going to be a elite, amazing player, but on a third line role as a checking defensive player, he is going going to be amazing. On a penalty kill one day, he's going to make life so difficult for opposing offenses. With his stick reach, with his overall ability, with his skating, this is a player that will really be a defensive stalwart. And his offense ain't bad either. His transition game is solid, and I do think his passing game, there's a lot to unlock there, but he'll be a fantastic two-way forward at the next level. But now going on to number 30, and one of the prospects I've changed my mind about the most over the course of the year. At number 30, I have USDP defenseman Ryan Chess. Now, if you asked me early in the year what I thought about Chesley, I would have said he was nowhere near first round caliber. But as I was beginning to watch more of him, especially as the World Juniors came around and then afterwards, to me, I started to see exactly the hype that Chesley does bring. At six foot, his skating is very good. And as a defense defenseman, there's a lot of edge work there and a lot of great play that is on a consistent basis there. I do think there is some question marks with his transition game, especially when it comes to his decision making there. But at the same time defensively I think there's a lot of tools there and he did provide a lot more of an offensive game as the year went on especially with his passing and overall quickness in making decisions although sometimes it can be pretty bad at the same time as a defensive two-way defenseman I think there is potential to be had with Ryan Chesley especially with his solid skating but if we're going to be talking about solid skating let's go on to one of the best skaters of this draft and number 29 I have Russian defenseman Vladimir Grudinin now Grudinin became quickly one of my favorite players to watch one of the best and most agile and mobile defenseman of this draft, if not the most mobile and agile. He's a player that just with his edge work and quickness can easily evade opposing four checkers and get away from pressure so easily. He's a guy that I do also like his offensive potential, especially on a power play. His puck handling is amazing and also one of the better uh, puck handlers of this draft. You combine that with his skating and I think there's a really offensive and really interesting rush player here, but I do think those physical traits and how how he gets off, gets knocked off pucks too easily could also keep him from reaching that NHL level. Pretty big boomer bust guy as well. 
But now moving on to number 28 and one of the more simple players of this draft. At number 28, I have Yuri Kulich, who just screams to me, fantastic third line centerman. Face of ability is great. His skating and edge work is fantastic, especially when starting play and getting out of those face offs. His shooting is pretty great too. And I think his shot is very underrated. This is a player that as a third line scoring centerman, I think can do a lot and his smarts as well. Even though they do have a ways to go, I think they're also on the right level at the pro leagues to where he's a guy that can adapt and really make play right in the NHL level. Now going on to number 27 and another huge wild card in this draft and Danili Yurov. Now, he's a player that might not transition to North America for a while, which I think will scare quite a few people, and rightfully so, and he barely played this year. Played some of the MHL, and when he was in the KHL, played like two minutes a game, if he was lucky. So there wasn't much to really go off of, but at the same time, his tools are absolutely top tier. If we're just going off talent, if we're just going off potential, Yurov pr should probably be in the top 20, but I do think some of the physical traits that he doesn't have, and some of the consistency issues he has does keep me from really loving this player. Next up at number 26, we're gonna go to another USDP defenseman here. Next up though, I have Seamus Casey. One of the more electrifying defensemen of this draft, especially with his transition game, but he's a player that with his amazing edge work and solid puck handling, can dangle out players so easily and really in the defensive zone, put possession on his team throughout the entire shift. He's a guy that in the offensive zone as well, has a great work ethic, really around the boards, can skate around opposing forwards so easily and his ability to get pucks to the slot and create high danger chances is one of the best among this draft. Though on defense, he does get knocked off the puck a little bit too much for my liking, and at 5'10", those physical and defensive traits do still need to take a big step before their NHL quality. But moving on to number 25, going into another interesting defenseman here. Next up from the Swift Current Broncos, I have Owen Pickering. Now, Pickering, in terms of raw tools, also has a lot to love. His physical traits are amazing, and at 6'5", I think his size is a really big part of his game in more ways than one. Although I do think his skating is fine and his mobility is pretty solid. At the same time, I do think his puck handling can definitely take that next step. And if it doesn't, I feel like he will be less of an offensive defenseman and more of a bottom pairing transitional player. But at the same time, a valuable potentially bottom six player, if not top four guy, that if he's able to unlock that skating, can do way more than he does already. Now going on to number 24 and going to rush forward Gleb Trikuzov, who's one of the more dynamic, and I think dynamic is the best word to describe Trikuzov in this draft, is one of the most interesting and smart IQ offensive players, knows how to push play, knows where to be, and loves to get pucks to high danger areas. He's going to be a player that if he gets better sample size and is a bit more accustomed to the men's game and men's maturity, I think he's a player that will do very well the next level and could even be as good as a top six forward. Now going on to number 23 though, and one of the bigger players of this draft in size and in game in Leon Bichel. One of my favorite defensemen of this draft and to me there's so much potential to be unlocked here. One of the hardest hitting defensemen of this draft if not the hardest and to me he has the best potential as a physical dominant defense defenseman and I do think there is some offense to be had there. His shot is great and his skating is really solid for a six foot five defenseman and that's why I'm so high on him. He's not just this burling hitting guy. He can do so much more and at the NHL level he's going to be a great prototype of the next era of defense and defenseman, which I think is key. Going on to number 22 though, next up I have Swedish defenseman Kali Odelius. Now when it comes to Kali, there is some big things there. I think his skating is fantastic and his physical traits at 6 foot are really projected, I think, going to the next level to be consistent at the NHL level, but I do feel like as well some of the shooting is an issue. He takes some weird chances and I do feel like with him, there is some refinement to be made, but there is potential potential there, and I think he could be a top four D-man. Now, going from two defensive defensemen, let's move on to one of the bigger offensive defensemen of this draft, maybe the most interesting and fun to watch offensive defenseman of this draft in Kevin Korchinski of the Seattle Thunderbirds. To me, he's one of the best transitional players, period, of this draft. Loves to get up and play and loves to create plays and pace all by himself. He's got it with his puck handling and great passing ability, has great potential there. But I do think the defensive game does kind of blow him by a little bit. At six foot two, there is potential there. 
player, but I do also think his skating isn't good enough to keep a hold of the best forwards going against him defensively, and I do think there is some more refinement that does need to be made, but at the same time, his transition game is so good that you might as well take a chance inside the top 25. Then going on to number 20, and the first forward and first player inside my top 20, at number 20, I have Slovakian forward Philip Mishar. Now, to me, Mishar has great traits, and some of the best skating and puck handling abilities of this draft. Loves get pucks in the slot and loves to create plays all by himself, but I do think the physical game, even though he is playing in Slovakia, is pretty horrendous. He gets knocked off pucks way too easily and along the boards can get kind of manhandled way too consistently. But I do think at the next level, if he's able to provide some muscle and able to get a lot better under his feet, there's a fantastic top six power play offensive player here. But now at 19, we're going to go to one of the more interesting players in defense of this draft from the Moose Jaw Warriors in Denton Metiachuk. Now, to me, he's been dominant, he's been amazing, and he's been so good in the WHL. But at the same time, some of the things he is doing and getting away with, I don't think are going to be all too easy at the pro level, even the NHL level for one. To me, this is a player that will have to still kind of change their offensive game quite a bit, and for a more offensive defenseman like Mediachuk, a more transitional defenseman like him, I feel like getting to the pro level and the and especially the AHL is going to be so important for him. Once we see what he's made up there, then I think we'll get a better assessment because the WHL is just too easy for him. But now we're going to go on to number 18 and talking about a little bit too easy let's go on to Jagger Furcus also from the Moose Jaw Warriors 80 points in 66 games dynamic especially in the second half of this year the biggest problem to me with Furcus is his physical game he gets knocked off pucks way too consistently and he's a player that I think just needs more size to him even though he is 5 foot 10 he doesn't play strong enough I don't think to really provide and alleviate some of those worries but at the same time his hockey sense is brilliant his shot is just so dynamic and he's a player that in the offensive zone can cook from anywhere on the ice he's going to be a great offensive player if those physical traits take that next step but now going on to number 17 and another whl player next up i have connor geeky from the winnipeg ice now i would have geeky a lot higher but to me the lack of explosiveness and the lack of clear cut speed with his skating is a humongous problem for a player that's going to be primarily used on offense and on transitions i also do think for a six foot four player he doesn't use his size nearly enough and especially offensively it feels like he doesn't want to use it at times which confuses me quite a bit I do like his puck handling and his passing is amazing but I do think he'll need to change his game a lot before he's that really solid and great offensive forward at the next level now going on to number 16 going on to the player that I might be highest on the most compared to what most people are at in Rucker McGrody now I love Rucker I absolutely absolutely love this player. The only problem that everybody has is his skating. And to me, if he's able to hire a coach that can get him some more explosiveness, it's all over. His shot is beautiful. His physicality is amazing along the boards. Such a monster to play against and such a great power forward. This is a guy that at the center position I think can be so hard to play against. And you combine that with his fantastic puck handling, his amazing decision making. To me, the only weakness is that skating. And if he's able to just get a little bit better and a little bit more explosive, I could see him being a good second line penalty kill player that does almost everything you'd want. But now moving inside the top 15, let's go to another centerman, but a little bit more of an unorthodox one in Marco Casper. I've kind of been on the fence on him a little bit throughout the course of this year, but over the past couple months, I've been seeing a lot more from him that I've really been liking. First things first, nobody's denying his motor is probably the best of this draft. One of the most consistent and one of the most interesting players along the boards. And one of the best parts about him is if the other team has the puck around him, he's going to find the way to strip it, get the puck back and still keep that cycle going. Such a good player along the boards. I think that'll really transition well to the NHL level. I just have a little bit of doubts over where the potential lies. I could see a situation where he maxes out as a good third line centerman, but I do think there is potential with his physical traits where you could see him be a second line center. But again, there's a pretty big coin to flip, flip over whether that will actually happen or not. Then going on to number 14, talking about potential that could be unlocked. Next up, I have Swedish forward Tavan Lekaramaki. Now to me, there is really one amazing thing 
anything about him, and that is, of course, his shot and his shot selection. Even though there is some consistency issues there, I do think most of the time when he is shooting, he has a pretty great eye for where he should be going and where he should be moving, and I do think his skating is good enough to where he does put himself in the positions by himself to get there a lot of the times, but I also do think his physical traits are way behind some of the players in the SHL, and you saw that a little bit when he was playing there, but I do think at the same time of his passing game being solid as puck handling being great, if you're able to unlock some of that hockey sense and some of that size, I do think Lucky Ramaki could be a great power play sniper at the next level. But now, let's go on to number 13 and go on to another winger that's pretty much completely different from Lekka Ramaki and Cutter Gauthier. Now, to me, Gauthier is a guy that's also risen quite a bit, and for a lot of the right reasons. His motor and defensive game is fantastic, and to me, he's going to be one of the more consistent and overall solid players of this draft class. But I do think his offensive and his efficiency there is really underrated, too. His shot is amazing, and to me, that's the most underrated part of his game. If he gets in the right places, he's not going to waste opportunities. And with his passing game and his puck handling being solid too, to me, there's a solid two-way 40-point guy at the NHL level that does all the right things and is going to be a coach's dream. But now let's talk about another coach's dream here at number 12 and another Swedish forward in Liam Ogren. Now to me, Ogren is going to be having one of the higher floors of this draft class. And although I like his talent and I especially like his shooting potential, I do think at the same time there is a chance where he maxes out as a bottom six checking solid neutral zone player. But at the same time, I think there's a good chance as well where he does become a second line guy that does all the small things and really gets in the details. He's going to be a solid and a fan favorite at the next level. Now going on to number 11 though, and we're going to go to the finish side of things next up in winger Joachim Kamel. Now to me, Kamel has kind of been all over the place throughout this year. The biggest problem for me with Kamel is although his shot is amazing, I think his shot selection is rather poor. And for a player that's projected to be this amazing sniper and one of the best goal scorer this, uh, scores of this draft, that is a problem in my opinion. But he also has some really underrated physical traits. To me, he even at 5'9", he really puts in hard work along the boards and does a lot of the time as well like to get pucks back to his team and back to himself along the play but I do also think again his shot selection is rather weak and I do think in terms of pace there is still more to be unlocked before he's a great pro player. But now going inside the top 10, next up, we're going to go to Russian defenseman out of Saginaw of the OHL in Pavel Mintyukov, who's quickly rose up my boards for very good reason. One of the best and most efficient offensive players really throughout this entire year. Really playing fantastic for Saginaw, 62 points in 67 games. To me, there's so many high traits that really stand out. His hockey sense is brilliant, and I think his puck handling is among the best of anybody in this draft let alone defensemen. I think his passing game and his consistency and crispness with passes is also a very underrated part of him, and his shot can be really powerful from the point as well. I do think there is some physical traits that do need work. I think he also, even at six foot one, can feel a little bit smaller than he needs to, but I do think this is a player that on a top four, on a power play, will be brilliant, and I think will be a great skating and solid fundamental offensive player. But now, going on to number nine, and another player that I'm pretty high on compared to most people going on to one of the highest European forwards of this draft, in my opinion, in Noah Ostland. Now, to me, Noah Ostland is one of the most dynamic and maybe the most electrifying forward and player of this draft class. To me, with his raw potential, if you're able to unlock that skill, to me, there is so much to be had, and I think there could be a first line dynamic power play player here. To me, the biggest problem is the consistency issues as well as the physical traits. He is five foot eleven, but he plays like he's five foot six. He's, he feels small out there, and especially in the neutral zone, so many attempts to transition play and get in the offensive zone just get stalwarted because he can't have enough separation, and I feel like that's going to be a really big problem at the next level, but if he's able to manhandle that and get out of the way and get some more muscle on him, to me that puck handling is brilliant, and that brain is amazing too. There's so much there, and I'm desperately hoping that some team picks him up and gets the most out of him. Now speaking of getting the most out of, let's go on to number eight and another fantastic offensive player here in Frank Nazer, who is another dynamic player in this draft class. 
class. To me, when it comes to Nazer, there's a lot to like. There's His motor is fantastic, and his speed is brilliant, too. He's going to be a guy that you just cannot keep up with, even if he's placed in the NHL right now, today. He's a player, though, that I think also has some ways to go with his physical traits, and I think also has maybe a little bit too much overconfidence, but at the same time, his hockey sense is brilliant. His passing is amazing, and I do think the next level, he could have one of the best potentials of this draft class if he's able to adapt to that pro game. I don't have many worries with him, but I also think there might be a chance where he completely busts. A little bit of that there. But now going on to number seven and another pretty big boom or bust prospect to me in Matthew Savoy. Now, here's the thing. If I told you right now that Savoy actually is a pretty good defensive forward, would you believe me? Would you believe me? Well, over the past few months, I've been watching a lot more of him, trying to get a really good grasp on him, and to me, he's a weird player. On paper, 90 points in 65 WHL games, fantastic. I do think there is some promise physically, but at the same time, not as much as I was expecting for a 5'9 player. I do think maybe the biggest problem right now for Savoy is just some of the thinking there. I do think there's some plays that he gets away with where he's not going to get away with at the pro game, especially in the offensive zone where I think there's some risky passes that he doesn't need to make, but I do feel like with the skating that he has, with the shot that he has, and with the overall fundamental abilities, there's a player that has shown to improve in the defensive zone, has shown to be better in transitions than he was before, and I, although I do think there is some room to improve, there is a great framework there for a top six dynamite offensive player. Now going on to number six though, and going on to the top defenseman of this class in Shek D-man, David Juracek. Now I'm not as high your check as some others, but I do got to admit the tools and the fundamentals there are fantastic. Although I do think he definitely needs to take a step above in defensive IQ and defensive positioning. He does have great physical traits at six foot three. I think there's potential there where if he does unlock the defensive game, he could be a great overall two-way force and kind of be a little bit, I would say, like Devon Taves, though I mean, with, I think a little bit of a lesser skater there. But at the same time, in the top six, totally deserving of a spot this high. But now going on to number five and the defenseman that I just barely have over here at check. To me, these two guys are pretty much tied, but at number five, I have Simone Nemech. Now, to me, Simone Nemech is a really interesting player here who has so much potential at the next level. Although he won't be an amazing defensive defenseman, at the same time, I still think his physical traits are pretty great at six foot one, and he does get around opposing four checkers pretty well. To me, one of the biggest problems with him is his consistency. Some shifts, he'll look absolutely dynamite, weaving around defenders, transitioning beautifully. Others, he'll look at an open play and just dump it down the ice for an icing. To me, there is some decision making that does need to be improved, but I do like his passing game. His skating is brilliant in the right moments. And to me, if you do unlock this player, you could get a type of Morgan Riley, maybe John Klingberg, transitional defenseman who just makes a lot of the right decisions, even if he does make some big gaffes, but does a lot of the right things and pushes play brilliantly. But now going on to number four, let's go on to one of the most controversial players of this draft, and rightfully so, in finish forward, Brad Lamberts. Now, a lot of you guys might have reservations for pretty good reasons. His, his uh, decision making can be rather raw, and his physical traits just are not good enough right now. But I also do think in Finland, his strengths are not getting utilized whatsoever, and he's been on just horrid team after horrid team with horrible luck and terrible teammates around him. He's a player that I would immediately put in the AHL, put to North America, America and get him going there because to me he's the best skater of this draft the most quick skater of this draft or the best puck handlers of this draft and one of the better passing players of this draft if he's able to unlock that potential to me you can have a first line player on your hands here and that's worth the bet that you make at number four now going on to number three though, let's go on to a much more sure thing in your eyes, Slavkoski. Now with Slavkoski, he's obviously gotten a lot of hype, and although I don't think he's worth a top two pick, at number three, I think that's where he should lie. His physical traits are obviously some of the best parts about him along the board, especially in the neutral zone. He uses his physical size so brilliantly throughout all of his game, and although I definitely think there needs to be more explosiveness, there needs to be better edge work with his skating, at the same time his shot is among the best of his draft, his positioning is brilliant and his puck handling is amazing especially in the defensive zone I think there's a very solid overall two-way sniper on your hands here and to me a lot of people have been comparing him to Capo Caco a lot of people have been comparing him to Miko Ronson but I think he falls in the middle I think he's kind of like Valerie Nachushkin maybe a little bit better offensively but I think he's going to be a great play pushing forward that does a lot of the right things 
Now going on to number two and the second best prospect of this draft, at number two, I have USA centerman Logan Cooley. To me, when it comes to Cooley, there's so much to like there. One of the best skating and edge work players of this draft, and you combine that with his brilliant smarts and one of the best passing uh, passing players of this draft, to me, there's so much to unlock in the offensive zone. Also, one of the best transitional players, in my opinion, of this draft as well, who just can be so efficient with it as, uh, in so many ways. And even though he is five foot ten, I don't think there's much of a worry over him playing at the pro level. He's shown he can get around defenders with ease, and when he, even when he is on one on ones, he can still battle along the boards and still get possessions out. To me, there's a player that does a lot of the right things and a lot of the details, but can be very flashy too. And to me, he's a very diverse and versatile forward of this draft. And again, is the only player outside of Shane Wright that I would consider for that first overall pick. But now let's go on to the number one spot. And of course, let's go on to Kingston and let's go on to Shane Wright. Anybody else though, realistically, that is not going to pick Shane Wright number one should not really be thinking about it too much, in my opinion. To me, Shane Wright is the obvious number one pick in so many ways. A lot of people are comparing him to Patrice Bergeron. I see him more as a John Tavares if he was much better defensively. To me, what strikes me is his IQ and his position. One of the most smart players you'll ever see, and easily the smartest player of this draft. His problem-solving skills are brilliant, and his offensive game can be great too. He's a lot more methodical. He's not going to make these highlight reel plays nearly as often as Slavkovsky or Logan Cooley might, but he's going to be a player that's efficient, is solid, does the right things every single time, and defensively is one of the best forwards of this draft. Might not have as high of a potential as some other big prospects over the past few years, but to me, he's worth a first overall pick and will be a great, consistent, and solid first line centerman for a long time to come. But that'll be it for today's 2022 NHL Draft Rankings. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys agree and disagree with, and let me know what you guys think about my rankings and what your rankings would look like. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you guys enjoyed this big video today. It always goes a long way and always means a lot. Share this video out with your friends. Get it to any NHL fans, any hockey fans, any draft fans you guys know online. Click this card for all my hockey prospects, rankings, content, whatever it might be in the card up above. My name is Nathan. Have a great day. Day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.